At a first glance, most people would assume that this is just an ordinary wooden table. Though it quickly appears to be more, as the eye catches some unexpected details on the surface. On a closer inspection, you can see that, while it is actual hardwood, there are a number of features that shouldn't be there on a normal table. And if you take a quick look underneath, you will see that it's actually very far from a normal table. Hi, I'm Pierre, and today I'd like to show you how I built my dream desk PC. This is in fact not only a full desktop computer, but also what we could call a full office, as it basically has all the things that you could need at an office. It is literally filled with high-end hardware. Recently, I started to work mostly from home, and that meant that I needed a lot of things that I took for granted at the office, such as a printer and a scanner. I live in a small flat in Paris, and that meant that I clearly don't have the extra room for an office, so my desk will end up in my living room, and I clearly don't want my living room to look like a giant mess of cables. Then I saw an awesome video from DIY Perks, where I fitted a wall computer inside such a hollow desk. I immediately loved the idea of not having a PC case lying around under my desk, but it made me wonder how many things we could actually fit inside such a hollow desk in order to make my home office as minimalist as possible. And I must say that I'm extremely pleased with the result. It feels like wood, it's extremely clean without a single cable to be seen, and that's something to say considering all the things that are inside this desk. Inside this first cavity, we have the core of our desktop computer, supporting a full-size ATX motherboard and a GPU. With the IO shield, which is conveniently accessible from this over cavity. And while this prototype is made for a desk PC, I'm planning to make one for docking Ultrabooks with a Thunderbolt dock supporting eGPU instead of the ITX motherboard. Moving on to the screen, I often have to make some sketches and sign documents, take notes, and so on. And that has often been a limitation for me in my work. So I decided to include a 22 inch pen display right there. And I feel it's also very nice to use as a secondary monitor. You still have those institutions that likes to send you those nasty and cumbersome papers. For those I added a flatbed scanner. This way I can scan the document and get rid of the paper. And for the eventual thing that I really must print, like shipping labels or tickets and things like that, I added a small printer right there. They will also use the desk for entertainment, like gaming and watching movies and so on. I decided to include a great audio system. For that I used two ways stereo loudspeakers. And I'm quite impressed with the sound quality, especially considering that even the amplifier is homemade, as we'll see later on. And it doesn't stop there now, does it? A DVD drive. On top there we have yet more I.O. with a standard size 3.5 inch bay for USB ports, card readers and so on. This is the controller deck, so you have the computer power button, the display controls and the amplifier knob. And this enclosure is very nice because you can fit a full-size keyboard and mouse, leaving the desk completely clean when you're not using it. For me, this is quite a cherry on the cake, as it's hiding my internet router, such that it's no longer collecting dust in the corner of my room. Though it could alternatively be used as a small storage to put some things. Last but not least is this enclosure in which you have the power sockets and the wireless charger. This way you can connect any additional hardware that you need, such as your screen, your chargers, a lamp or whatever you need at the desk. Overall, I love the minimalist aspect of the desk, while it provides me with absolutely everything I could need. The only two wires connecting the desk are the power supply and my internet cable. Before diving into the design process of this desk, i like to mention that if enough people are interested, I will launch it on Kickstarter. 
So if you'd like to get such a desk for yourself, please consider leaving me your email address on my website, which is linked down below uh, in the description. This way, I will know when we have enough people interested in this project to happen, and also it will enable me to notify you when the project launches. If you want this project to happen one day, subscribing is really super important. So why don't you hit that pause button down there and head to my website before we continue. Okay, is that all done? Then let's move on. First, I will walk you through the different steps of the design of this whole thing and then how I built it. So I started to make a list of all the things that I wanted in my desk. Then I started to search, like a lot. I searched for all kind of things, small printers, dimensions of flatbed scanners, power supplies. Oh, I spent so much time looking at power supplies, pen displays, power sockets, ATX specifications, wood suppliers and whatever not. Once I got all the approximate dimensions, I started to sketch to get a rough idea where each component could fit and where it will be the most ergonomic. Sketches are great, but when you make this kind of project, you need to be very precise. And for that, parametric 3D modeling is what you need. I use a free and open source software called FreeCAD and it's really awesome. So if you're interested, you can check that out. I will leave the link into the description. In FreeCAD, I made all the different components that make the desk. This lets you be sure that in the end, everything will fit neatly together without any bad surprises. The general idea is to have two metal sheets and between them, a wooden frame which create different cavities, one for printer, one for the scanner and so on. When doing such a design, you have to consider every small thing, where the cables will run, how the air flows into the enclosure, what is the thickness of that component and so on. You cannot leave anything random or you're sure that it will not fit in the end. So make sure to take the time to imagine where everything will go and how it will fit together. 3D design was not enough though. I also had to do PCB design. You see, the speakers need an amplification PCB and I couldn't find any which fit neatly into my enclosure. Also, the control buttons for the LCD needed to be accessible and the stock buttons were just not usable for that. So I ended up making a wall PCB for those two functions. For that, I used KiCad, which is also a free and open source design software, which I'll also leave the link into the description. And it mostly goes like this. You source the different components, the switches, the potentiometer, amplification chips, and so on. Then you follow the data sheets to make the schematic. And once you have the schematic, you can make the board itself. Once that's done, you can order PCB samples from many suppliers on the internet, which is actually very cheap. It's about five or ten dollars or so. After several weeks of sourcing all the different components, it is now time to order everything and get starting building it. For a frame, we need strips of hardwood of 20 by 45 mm precisely. I couldn't find those exact dimensions, so I got something close enough and used a planner to get them to the correct dimensions. The extra width of the hardwood is actually very great because it let us remove the initial bow from the pieces of hardwood, which would have been a real problem later on. We then cut all the 18 components of the frame at the correct dimension, making sure to take into account even the width of the blade. We have to be very precise because an error of just a few millimeters would make the wall frame wrong. The same saw can also be used to chamfer some of the parts, 
by moving the saw by 45 degrees. We use a column drill to make the holes for the cables as well for the buttons of the controller deck. For the cutouts which are not round, such as the computer venting split, first a print of the cutout is glued on the part. Then a scroll saw is used to cut the shape. A little bit of cleaning and sanding is required, but the result is pretty neat. The parts of the frame are to be assembled with dowels, which will bring rigidity to the structure. Dowels are tricky because if your holes are not exactly at the correct position, then the assembly will be twisted or shifted a little bit, which would end up with electronics not fitting inside their enclosure. So in order to make sure that they are aligned correctly, I had to make some custom tools. The tools are made with FreeCAD again. And if you want to learn more about parametric 3D modeling with FreeCAD, you can check the full video of the design of that tool. The link to it is down there in the description as well. And now that the design is done, it can be printed on a 3D printer. Some metal tubes are used to make the drilling channel stronger. With those, I can now easily drill all the double holes while being sure they will be at the correct position. Those shapes for the controller deck are a bit more difficult to make. To make them, I'm using a 60 degree drill bit. Unfortunately, that bit doesn't fit on my CNC, so I will have to use that manual mill. It's the first time I'm using that kind of machine but the result is not that bad. A bit of sanding and it will be great. The different metal sheets have been ordered on John Steel. It's a company that makes custom metal laser cutting sheets based on your day safe. Apparently it didn't quite fit inside my mailbox. This is great because the metal sheets have been cut based on my precise drawings including the screw holes and venting holes and even the holes for the ATX motherboard. Everything is here so now it should be very simple to assemble everything while having everything at the correct position. I used 1mm thick steel in order to get the desk as thin as possible. You can see the sheets are quite bendy on their own, but once assembled it will feel very sturdy. Our next step is to drill the holes for the wood inserts, which will fix the back panel to the wooden frame. First, I start with the edge of the frame. I can position them precisely under the back panel and drill the pilot holes. The pilot holes are then countersunk. Then they are made at the insert diameter. And the inserts are screwed in. And the result is pretty neat. In order to get our flat headed screw flush on the surface, the holes on the metal sheet needs to be countersunk. Nice. Now that the edge is done, we can pre-assemble the complete frame to add the rest of the inserts. It takes some time to get it right because despite my custom tools, some dowels holes are not perfect so the dowels need to be adjusted with a cutter knife. To finish the assembly of the frame, we need to unscrew the top edge to be able to insert the last parts.
Now we can finally drill all the pilot's holes. Then disassemble everything and chamfer all the insert holes and screw all the inserts inside. Then comes the most tedious part of the world build, countersinking the 80 holes of the back panel. It almost cost the life of my drill. It is now time to apply the wood veneer on our metal sheets. I'm using an oak veneer that came in large bands. Using masking tape, I bonded several bands together. Before applying the veneer, the surface has to be cleaned up as any oil residue or dust will prevent a correct adhesion. Masking tape is applied to cover all the holes to prevent the glue from leaking. The metal surface also has to be sanded. Here I'm using neoprene glue, which is well suited to glue metal and wood together. This glue has to be applied on both surfaces and be left to dry for about 10 minutes. Once it's dried, the two surfaces will bound instantly together. We apply the veneer on both the top metal sheets and on some portions of the bottom metal sheet, in the cavities that will be seen when the desk is used. I use the scrap of wood to apply pressure and make sure the glue sticks correctly on the wall surface. After that, using a cutter knife I remove the excess of veneer and cut open all the different holes and covers. Unfortunately, the veneer covered our nice hole pattern that we had for the speakers. So I first tried the very extremely tedious task of drilling the 400 holes of the pattern, only to be very disappointed by the result. While it could have looked great with the speaker really hidden behind the hood, the whole quality is really not good enough as the wood kind of exploded. So in the end, I just took a chisel and removed everything. It looks different, but after some sanding and cleaning, it looks very nice too. Removing from the other speaker, It is now time for the final assembly of the frame. I'm using wood glue to assemble the dowels and all the frame components together. While doing so, I screw each component to the bottom sheet to make sure it sits in the correct position. One piece of the frame is still missing though, the power socket plate. We'll begin by hammering that metal plate into shape, as I don't have a sheet bender which would have been handy. I'm quite happy to have found those international sockets, which are compatible with almost all the countries. Let's finish by wiring up everything together. After adding some USB and 12 volt connectors, let's install the plate. The eagle eye between you can see that the holes I prepared for the inserts are actually not in the correct position, so I will just use plain wooden screws here. Let's also add another power socket and the power input socket. It is now time for more gluing, as we need to fix the front metal sheet to the frame. For this, I use another kind of glue because neoprene glue won't let me adjust the position once both surfaces touch each other and it will be impossible to position the front metal plate correctly on the first try. So instead I used this glue which is also great for this job and let me adjust the position perfectly. I press it down to make sure it sticks correctly 
and then clean up the excess of glue. A bit of sanding is required to make the angles round and the wall edge very smooth. And I finish by applying a protective oil for the wood. The structure is now almost done. The last thing is to add some wooden legs to the desk. First, I make a groove in one of the legs in order to be able to hide the cables inside. Each of the legs is then connected to a custom metal plate in order to increase the strength of the structure. Then the legs are screwed to the main frame, making the desk very sturdy. I really like the way the power cable is completely hidden in the leg. Without out of the way, it is now time to add all the electronics inside the desk. But before we do so, why don't you hit that like button down there and consider subscribing to my channel. You can also leave a small comment like nice or great job. I, I tell you this because when you do so, it helps the YouTube algorithm to show this video to more people which will end up with the project happening versus not happening. So really consider it and uh, also it will motivate me to make more videos like this. As you can guess, there are a lot of work, so motivation is definitely required. So for this build, we are going to use this uh, 600 watt uh, power supply from, from Enhance, which is um, like the go-to power supply for small factor uh, computer case and fortunately it's thin enough to fit inside our build so i already went ahead and soldered some uh, extension cables such that the, uh, the uh, atx power supply can reach the computer area and now we are going to feed all the cables through the channels that are inside our frame To make sure the air flows correctly, I applied those thick stickers. This way the air goes in from here, then goes through the power supply and is forced out of the venting split. Some hot glue is used to make sure the power supply doesn't move. The last part of the power supply area is the wireless charger. The metal of the cover of this cavity has a hole, which is covered by the veneer. So the charger can rest right behind the veneer, such that the thickness between the phone and the charger will be very minimal. The charger is glued in place. Looks like it's working properly. For the cooling of our system, I got some Noctua fans which will be installed on top of those small rubber sticks which will prevent any vibration. With that in place, we need the custom PCB. Those are the components and the board. Time for PCB assembly. The PCB can now fit in its position. Let's finish the controller deck by adding the IO bay. And putting a nice knob on the amplifier potentiometer. Finally, it's time to add the computer itself. 
The back sheet has the holes necessary for the different sizes of ITX motherboards. So we can just apply some 6mm pillar support and fit the motherboard on top of them. Now our height is very limited. So for the CPU cooler, we use a 1U cooler which is made of pure copper. As copper is twice as conductive as aluminium, it should help with the reduced size. Some pads are put on the GPU such that the air can flow inside the fans. If this is not enough though, I will replace the stock cooler by the same 1U cooler that we used on the CPU. Now the funny part is integrating the pen display. I'm quite lucky because I contacted Rueon, one of the few companies making pen displays, to tell them about my project. And they agreed to sell me an open frame version of their Canvas 22 with a glass customized to my dimensions. This way it can be integrated very easily. But first, some cable management is really needed. It looks like a giant mess right now, especially since I used random cables that I had at home. Behind the display, we have a lot of room to put the DVD drive, the display power supply and the hard drives. You could probably fit three or maybe even four three and a half inch hard drives in there. Once everything is in place, we can bring down the display, which fits perfectly. For the sound system, I use both woofers and tweeters to get a two-way speakers. Foam is used to prevent any vibration in the metal. The small metal parts here can be folded to be used as small legs. The flatbed scanner was not difficult to find. They got all pretty small. It's actually too thin, so I will use some pieces of wood to raise it a little bit. So there was actually several models that I could fit. I chose one of the best selling one on Amazon and it's great because it has a removable cover. Neat, I love how the cover replaced the scanner's one. For the printer, the task was more difficult. Usual cartridge-based printer are not thin enough. I'm very happy with the alternative that I found. This is a thermal printer, which means that there isn't any cartridges required. Sure, it can print only in black and white, and it's not particularly fast. But I don't really care because for me the low maintenance is more important than those. Because no cartridges mean no $60 cartridge and no dry ink and no dumping your printer because the cartridges are not sold anymore. And with that, my dream desk is finally complete. And now it's time for the first test. Well, I'm kidding, of course I already tried it, but for the sake of the video, let's say it's the first test and it's running very well. The thermals are not that bad, the GPU is a little bit on the warm side, but uh, I think I will probably mod it to replace the ventilator and it should be fine afterwards. But the CPU itself is relatively cool. It's surprising considering the very small heatsink that we are using. The heatsink itself is a bit loud, but it's actually loud only when, um, when the cover is removed. Once the cover is on, it's actually pretty quiet. Well, I hope you have been enjoying this video. And again, consider uh, leaving me your email on my website, which is the most important. Then also subscribing to my channel and uh, liking the video, which will be uh, really nice if it's uh, possible. And other than that, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.